This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. The Wisdom of Life From Essays by Arthur Schopenhauer Translated by T. Bailey Saunders Read by David Rintoul For Ukemi Audiobooks Introduction In these pages, I shall speak of the wisdom of life in the common meaning of the term, as the art, namely, of ordering our lives so as to obtain the greatest possible amount of pleasure and success, an art the theory of which may be called eudaimonology, the science of human happiness, for it teaches us how to lead a happy existence. Such an existence might perhaps be defined as one which, looked at from a purely objective point of view, or rather, after cool and mature reflection, for the question necessarily involves subjective considerations, would be decidedly preferable to non-existence, implying that we should cling to it for its own sake, and not merely from the fear of death, and further, that we should never like it to come to an end. Now, whether human life corresponds, or could possibly correspond, to this conception of existence is a question to which, as is well known, my philosophical system returns a negative answer. On the eudaimonistic hypothesis, however, the question must be answered in the affirmative, and I have shown, in the second volume of my chief work, that this hypothesis is based upon a fundamental mistake— Accordingly, in elaborating the scheme of a happy existence, I have had to make a complete surrender of the higher metaphysical and ethical standpoint to which my own theories lead, and everything I shall say here will to some extent rest upon a compromise, insofar, that is, as I take the common standpoint of every day and embrace the error which is at the bottom of it. My remarks, therefore, will possess only a qualified value— for the very word eudaimonology is a euphemism. Further, I make no claims to completeness, partly because the subject is inexhaustible, and partly because I should otherwise have to say over again what has already been said by others. The only book composed, as far as I remember, with a like purpose to that which animates this collection of aphorisms is Cardan's De Utilitate Ex Adversis Capienda, which is well worth reading, and may be used to supplement the present work. Aristotle, it is true, has a few words on eudaimonology in the fifth chapter of the first book of his rhetoric, but what he says does not come to very much. As compilation is not my business, I have made no use of these predecessors, more especially because in the process of compiling, individuality of view is lost, and individuality of view is the kernel of works of this kind. In general, indeed, the wise in all ages have always said the same thing, and the fools, who at all times form the immense majority, have in their way too acted alike, and done just the opposite. And so it will continue." For, as Voltaire says, we shall leave this world as foolish and as wicked as we found it on our arrival. The Wisdom of Life Chapter 1 Division of the Subject Aristotle divides the blessings of life into three classes, those which come to us from without, those of the soul, and those of the body, Keeping nothing of this division but the number, I observe that the fundamental differences in human lot may be reduced to three distinct classes. 1. What a man is, that is to say, personality, in the widest sense of the word, under which are included health, strength, beauty, temperament, moral character, intelligence, and education. 2. What a man has, that is, property, and possessions of every kind. 3. How a man stands in the estimation of others, by which is to be understood, as everybody knows, what a man is in the eyes of his fellow men, or, more strictly, the light in which they regard him. This is shown by their opinion of him, and their opinion is, in its turn, manifested by the honour in which he is held, and by his rank and reputation. The differences which come under the first head are those which nature herself has set between man and man, 
and from this fact alone we may at once infer that they influence the happiness or unhappiness of mankind in a much more vital and radical way than those contained under the two following heads, which are merely the effect of human arrangements.'